Hey, it's Friday Night Hits right now. Welcome into week two. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. It's electric. Seven miles separate West Side and Teal. Hannah scant 15 minute drive for the reigning champion Rams tonight to meet the Yellow Jackets for the 67th Electric City Showdown. Julia Morris at Teal Hannah with our game of the week. Westside and TL Hannah are separated by less than 10 miles and both have been two of the best teams in the upstate over the last few years. Westside won last year's matchup. Rams setting the tone early. Their first possession ends with a short punch in by Sherrod Richardson. Rams up seven. A few minutes later, TL Hannah struggles to punt there. That leads to a big play by Westside special teams. Zion Paul takes it to the house. Westside leads 14 0 at the end of the first. In the second, Rams keep rolling. Cutter Woods with the beautiful ball to Shamarius Bomar. 54 yard score for another Rams touchdown. Hannah gets on the board with a few minutes before halftime. Katie Patterson biding his way through traffic into the end zone. It's a 21 to 7 game. But in the final seconds before halftime, Woods connects with Jamison Wilson for time. Woods connects with Jamison Wilson for a 34 yard touchdown. Rams led 28 to 7 at the break. And Westside's offense too much for Hannah to contain. In the third quarter, Richardson scores his second touchdown of the game. The Rams win big, 56 to 20. You want to represent your team and your town, and we just want to keep on, you know, winning and, and doing what we got to do. Uh, just great sideline work over there with my coaches. Great, great you know, this is a great night for football tonight. Great job for the uh, Westside Rams. Westside hosts BHP next Friday. TL Hannah plays at Wren. In Anderson, I'm Julia Morris, WIFF News 4 Sports. Julia, thank you. So the Rams keep rolling. Part of the massive 18 5A Region 1 jail man already playing their final non region game tonight, hosting the Daniel Lions, who have won 64 of their last 66 games. Daniel has not lost a regular season game since October of 2018, but they trailed jail man 21 3 in the second quarter. 21 10 now, late in the half. Bryson Freeman getting to the quarterback, drops jail man Darnell McLeod. Pats took an 11 point lead into the half. Third quarter, man leaning into the ground game in the Red zone, Sias Morrison. Just give me my money. Man pushes their advantage to 18. Daniel gets close, but the Patriots hang on and they upend the champs 28 to 23. Daniel's first regular season loss since 2018. Bowling Springs 2-0 for the first time since 2016. The Bulldogs with an early season road test at Chapman. And the Springs sizzling early just a minute into the opening quarter. Lincoln Husky delivers a strike to Kyle Patterson for the six-yard touchdown. And the Bulldogs are on the board first. In the second quarter now, Bulldogs give it a Gavin Calhoun on the goal line. He steamrolls his way into the end zone for a 14-0 lead. And Boiling Springs, they are just getting going. A 52-7 win over Chapman, a big time performance as Boiling Springs gets to 3 and 0. Oh. BHB's high powered attack averaging 41 over the first two Fridays. Home and Honey Path against Lawrence. Very first play from scrimmage for BHP. Clemson commit Marquise Henderson. Good things happen when he gets the ball 74 yards right on by it. Bears strike first. And on their very next drive, oh, you just know it's going to be that man, Henderson, again. Nine carries, 196 yards, three touchdowns. The future Tiger sets the school's all time rushing record in the win and BHP blast Lawrence 55 to 6. Gaffney getting their season started last week with a thrilling two point overtime win at JL Man facing another Greenville County club tonight with the Red Raiders at the reservation. Greenville 0 and 2 to begin this campaign under new head coach Jay Boshaw. The Raiders getting after it early though. Banks booting to Jacarian Stewart almost loses it, but the concentration to haul it in. Greenville takes the touchdown lead. It did not last long. Chaz Smith. For Gaffney in his house, he chooses contact, takes the hit, takes another, just keeps going. Gaffney scores 41 and answer to end the first half, and they get a comfortable 54 to 14 win over Greenville. 
Greenwood awfully good last week in their opener. Dorman hoping for a bounce back effort. The Cavaliers leading 10 0 at halftime. They had the ball, but backed up in their own end. McCarran Anderson tries to throw the screen. He gets picked off by Greenwood's Davion Griffin. The pick six. So the Eagles down just three. Same score, same quarters. 10 to 7. Dorman marched down the field. They hand the ball off to Deshaun Watkins Himes. They go up by 10. The Eagles will get close, but Dorman hangs on and they get a 20 to 14 road win at Greenwood. 2-0 Hillcrest ranked 10th in the state in 5A, traveling to winless Greer tonight. And oh, you just know those kids would be fired up. And they were. Let's show you the highlights. Tight game at halftime. Hillcrest leading 21-14. That's the score to the fourth. Caleb Sutton, he'll do it himself. Scrambles for a 25-yard touchdown. Bobbin and weaving right on into the end zone. That puts the Rams ahead 28-14. Greer would not go ever into that gentle night, however, as they drive 95 yards capped off by a one-yard touchdown run to Nick Holmes. Hillcrest, however, hangs on. They knock out Greer 28-21 to for the 300th win in program history. Congratulations to Hillcrest on that monumental win. Reds outscored their first two opponents 90-7. to Powdersville averaging nearly 40 points per game, but no wins to show for it yet. Kane's leading 14-7 to in the third on the move. Colton Bagwell trying to make something happen. He's picked off in the end zone by Joshua Knuckles. The Patriots couldn't do anything with it, however, so Ren gets the ball back. Bagwell picked off again by Knuckles again. The Canes defense has been great through three weeks, however, and Ren finally able to punch in a score. Bagwell uses his legs this time. Canes with 3-0 after a 34-7 win over Powdersville. All right, we're taking a quick time out here on Friday Night Hits. When we return, more touchdowns and Sky 4 touching down at Riverside High School for their game against Christchurch with Chase Justice. But first, here's Mike Up with Riverside's Matt Rochester. Kick over time! Kick over time! He lined up offside. That's what we're doing too much, thinking. Just do your job. Hey, if y'all don't pull your freaking knee pads down, I'm going to get all y'all. We make sure we're lined up before we run the play. Do we not? Good job, baby. Hey, make it a little too easy. We don't need a home run every play. Let's go on the 50. Let's go. Do your job on every play, every single snap. to help shoot football games all across the upstate. This week, we're climbing aboard Sky 4 and taking it to the game. Riverside High School, where the Warriors are off to a 2-0 start to kick off the 2020 horse season, playing host to the Christchurch Cavaliers. First offensive snap of the game, Riverside. Coming out of the Wildcats, screen pass to the QB, Gideon Merhib, but it's a double pass. And there's Jaden Speedy Taylor wide open down the field, 65 yards to the house. Riverside jumps out to a 7 to nothing lead. But the Cavs would start to move the sticks. Second and short from the Warriors' 21-yard line, Tucker Hendricks back to pass, finds Jackson Rep, who makes a move and is off to the races. Just like that, we're all tied up at seven apiece. Later on in the first, our Tuck and Howell play of the week, Jaden Taylor, 71 yards for his second score of the first quarter. The Warriors take a 14-7 lead, and they would dominate this one. Riverside rolls, final score 37-20. Reporting for Friday Night Hits, I'm Chase Justice. That's good stuff right there, Chase. Thank you so much. And Friday Night Hits keeps on rolling. Big one in Spartanburg County between Broome and Spartanburg. Both programs one and one to start the season. Not going to lie to you here, folks. Most of the action already over by the time we arrived. Vikings were in complete control coming out of the locker room, leading 31-6 to in the third. And the Spartanburg defense, they were still swarming after last week's loss to Dutch Fork. A vintage Vikes effort in route to a 47-6 win over Broome. Cats and dogs, Pendleton off to a nice start, visiting Woodmont. A couple of early field goals, Woodmont leading early in this game, three to nothing after they kick that field goal. This was a 
Pretty interesting game here for the Woodmont Wildcats, and they finally get in the end zone. T.J. Williams, he's going to bust his way on in, 11 yards for the touchdown. Woodmont takes a 10 to nothing lead, and they go on to get a 34-19 to win over Pendleton. Two Panthers enter, only one would exit with a win. Abbeville Panthers battling the Batesburg-Leesville Panthers at Height Nichols. Panthers, Batesburg-Leesville gets the ball first. They go right down the field. Amadre Wooden virtually untouched right down Main Street for a 36-yard house call. You knew Abbeville would answer. They do. Jit sweeping it to Collins Brown. Touchdown, Abbeville. Batesburg-Leesville, though, they didn't come all this way for nothing. They roll into Abbeville County, and they upset the Panthers 37 to 35. What a win for Batesburg Leesville. Let me show you a few scores from across our area tonight. Easily beating Wade Hampton 41 to 14. Seneca over West Oak 42 to 3. Mountain View has been an absolute wagon through their first two games. 118 points scored, just seven given up on the road tonight at St. Joe's. The Knights coming off a hard-fought loss last week to Chapman. The Stars, they would go right down the field on their opening drive. Jalen McGill a superstar running back grabbing six from the corner store. He will be in Clemson tomorrow for the Tigers opener against App State. C.J. Spiller in attendance tonight to catch the game. St. Joe's, though, they signed up for a battle. William Gillespie. Okay, we see you 2-0. St. Joe's evens the proceedings at 7, but the Stars just getting started. They go on to get a 48-21 to win over St. Joe's on the road. Found in with a couple of furious rallies in their first two weeks. Nearly came all the way back last Friday after trailing 21 to zip. Meeting Malden here. And a field goal by Fountain Inn. That ties the game at 3 into the third quarter. And Fountain Inn's quarterback, Sam Holliday, into the end zone for a touchdown. Fountain Inn, a low-scoring game, but they get the 12-3 win over Malden. Woodruff haven't started 3-0 since 2018. They hope to change that here against Emerald. Scoreless in the first. Woodruff's T.J. Morris, pressure coming, escapes, and he glides on in for a Wolverines touchdown. And on their side of the field again, Morris going down the sideline to Cam Taylor. Claws out, Wolverines rolling. Another Cam Taylor touchdown from T.J. Morris. And Woodruff goes on to get a 62-35 win. I'll show you a few more scores from across our area tonight. Blackville Hilda beating 96 on the road, 34-29. Landrum at home over Ware Shoals, 54-26. A few more scores as well. Batesburg. Beaten Cherryville 48 to 12 convincingly at home. Mid Carolina getting a 28 to nothing win over Whitmire. So that'll do it for us here on Friday Night Hits. Three weeks already in the books, technically week two. All the great games all across our area for Chase Justice in the chopper tonight. Julia Morris with our game of the week and our entire hardworking crew that works so hard to put this show on for you each and every Friday night. Thank you as always for joining us. We hope you enjoy your football weekend and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place.